So we're gonna go through and talk about different aspects of our behavior programs at the Animal Rescue League and the Center for Shelter Dogs. First, by starting about our evaluation process because I think that's crucial in terms of understanding the individual animal. And we have developed the Match Up to Shelter Dog Rehoming Program, which is a program that uses all available information about the pet's behavior. So their behavioral history, any information about their behavior in a previous home, their behavior evaluation results, and behavior that's been observed in the shelter. So if we observe that the dog is jumping up on people in the shelter, that gets thought about in this program to help us guide treatment and placement decisions. So we're gonna go through the different aspects of our evaluation process, starting with the behavior history. And we have about a four page intake questionnaire Many people ask, well, are people being honest on these questionnaires? And I actually did research on that during my specialty training program at UC Davis. And we found that for some categories of behavior, specifically owner-directed aggression and stranger fear, yes, people were less than likely to be honest. But what I found is the Animal Rescue League of Boston used to be an open admission shelter. We now call ourselves a flexible admission shelter. And, and what we mean by that is we have a waiting list for people to come into the shelter. And, but once they come into the shelter and we've, we've decided that they're adoptable, we will keep them for as long as it takes to find them a home. So we certainly have dogs that have been with us for nine months, cats that have been with us for a year. What, what I found is that as the Animal Rescue League changed from an open admission to a shelter that is known as a shelter that takes some of these pets with behavioral challenges, is that we're getting more honesty on these intake questionnaires because if the public perceives that we're gonna do everything we can to help try to place the pet, it seems to me that they're more likely to be honest because people report, they certainly report problems on the questionnaires that we give to them. And I didn't get as much reporting of that when I worked at other shelters that didn't have the same policies. So our, our questionnaire is four pages long. Some people say, well, isn't that very long? Isn't that too long for them to fill out? For people who are dedicated to really wanting their pet to find a new home, they are very, very willing to fill it out. And we certainly, for people who have language barriers, things like that, we fill it out with them. Moving on to the behavior evaluation. Our behavior evaluation is a standardized behavior evaluation that has 11 SUD tests looking at standard things that um, are on many different behavior evaluations, such as interaction with people, response to handling, how the dog plays, is the dog possessive, how does it respond to strange and novel things, such as a life-size Barbie toddler doll and a strange-looking woman, and then we do a dog-dog interaction. We don't do a cat evaluation on our behavior evaluation. And the behavior evaluation itself identifies behavioral traits, which really help us to maximize the odds of a safe and successful adoption. So through the, the course of our behavior evaluation, the pet gains scores for aggression, fear, excitability, friendliness, playfulness, and trainability. So as an example, trainability, the maximum score you can get is 15. So if I am reading behavior evaluations results of a dog and I see that the dog got 12 out of 15, I know that that, that is a dog that did well on the training section of our evaluation. So it helps to create a, a common language so we can understand where that dog lies in relation to other dogs. And it also helps us to figure out where we should place this particular dog. And so that's the personality scoring in relation to the evaluation. <clears throat> As I said already, we also look at behavior in the shelter. So anything that happens in the shelter of concern gets recorded in our shelter software. We use Chameleon and incorporated into the, this entire system. The, if something, if we've already done our behavior evaluation and then a week later the dog bites another dog. We have play groups at our shelter where all the dogs go out together and play with each other. And if a bite were to occur in that play group, then their, their summary, which we'll talk about next, gets changed a little bit and that their points gets changed if a bite were to occur. So we're always reassessing and reevaluating. So the outcome, besides the personality scoring of the um, evaluation process, including intake evaluation and shelter behavior, is that the dog gets points. And I'm talking about dogs here and not cats. 
We provide general guidelines for what those points may mean to a shelter, but it's very important to acknowledge that every shelter is different. So for our shelter, and probably for most shelter, a dog with zero to three points is a dog with few or no problematic behaviors, likely to be a very easily adoptable dog. A dog with four to 20 points may have some problematic behavior, so a dog who had growled at other dogs is gonna fit into that category. And it may benefit from behavior modification. It, it may just benefit from pre-adoption behavior counseling. A dog with over 21 points is a dog that has several behavior problems or severe behavior problems. And this is the category above which we recommend seriously concern. Is this dog adoptable in your shelter versus not? These points are, as I said, guidelines which create a common language for us so that I know that if Jackie Boy got 32 points, and you'll see Jackie Boy later, I know what that means. Really, really important to acknowledge that we place many, many dogs with more than 21 points in homes. These are not strict cutoffs. We, it creates a common language, but we evaluate every dog as an individual when we're making decisions. Cat evaluations. As I said, I unfortunately work for the Center for Shelter Dogs and not the Center for Shelter Cats. But all cats in our shelter do receive a physical examination and behavioral observations. Not all cats receive a behavior evaluation because probably like many of you, our shelter is facing budget problems and we don't have enough staff and volunteers so that every cat can have a behavior evaluation. But we do do them on cats that may be going to foster homes, may need medical procedures or tests, or that have some very, very concerning behaviors that we're deciding whether to move on with that cat. So when we have questionable behavior or deciding whether we want to invest a lot of money into the cat, then we do do a behavior evaluation. And I'm just going to open up a document here that shows you an example of the behavior evaluation. <clears throat> Similar to the dog evaluation, we look at their behavior in the room, we look at sociability, we look at their response to being picked up um, across a number of different scenarios. We look at play behavior, and we score them for aggression, fear, friendliness, emotional arousal, and whether they recover from that. And I'm gonna show you that, and we have detailed definitions for our scoring. I feel it's very, very important that when we're evaluating behavior that we're very, very clear what mild, what moderate, and what severe means. So we have the cat get scored for every subtest on a scale of zero to three. Three is severe aggression where the cat bites. Zero means no aggression observed. So that's our cat evaluations.